Hey everyone, today we're going to focus on sculpting the wooden part of the axe. So select your base. I'm going to use a snake hook tool here to pull a part of the top of the axe around. So I want to make it feel like the top has uh, broken pieces of wood coming out, coming out on the edges. I'm just pulling chips a little bit up and down. For the snake hook, you don't want to pull too much in some places because of the topology. If you're having any issues uh, with topology when pulling out, you can always dynamesh though. I'm taking a trim dynamic and those areas I pulled out I'm flattening down. This will help it feel more like uh, like wood is broken off instead of just spiky areas. I dynameshed it. I'm going back in with the inflate and I'm thickening up the inside. I'm trying to make it feel less like spikes. So I'm giving it some mass in the inside right now. Just go back and forth, train dynamicing it, making it more boxy. I increase the speed of the video for now. Uh, I'll just talk over it. I'm just going back and forth again. Trim dynamic, making some areas flat. Going back with the snake hook, moving some shapes around. I originally made, a, made it too spiky, so I'm trying to remove some of it. Just experimenting with the shape. I want to make it feel like the wood was broken off of it or torn off. You know, checking the silhouette with another material is always good. Alright, now what I'm doing is I took the damn standard and I am cutting out valleys. It should be back to normal speed now. So I'm cutting out valleys inside of it to make it feel like it's broken more. Uh, make sure to cut it in the lower areas. The biggest cuts should be in that area anyway. Right. Also get it in transitional areas. That's always a good place to uh, to put large cuts. This helps uh, blend and bring together a separate uh, assets or subtools of the wood. There's uh, other tools that you could use other than damp standards. There's orb crack brush, but uh, those tools uh, are usually found in certain sites. Uh, I'm going to stick with the damp standard because every ZBrush uh, has it. So you won't have to go around and find it, but if you have a specialized brush just for it, I would recommend you use it. Orb crack brush, I would say, is one of the best brushes to use in a scenario if you can find it. I'll put a link down in the description if you'd like. But yeah, um, now make some circles like you would have in the wood. It should only be in the center. You won't have it in the outside. Now I'm starting to work on cuts that would be smaller.
Those can be a little bit more randomized. You don't want to separate all these cuts at equal distances. You want to make a little random separation so that it feels like the wood pieces aren't all the same size. If we make them all the same size, the same length, the same distance from each other, it'll feel very manufactured. And you want to make it feel like it's a real piece of wood. So doing all these variations in sizes, distance, and separation from each other is really going to help sell it. Doing some horizontal breaks. Now, we're going to have to make sure also to get uh, the mirrored areas. In the mirrored areas, you want to make sure that you cut it in the center or you, you don't want to you don't want to cut it uh, two lines near the center of the mirrored area. It's going to look very weird. So either the centered area or far enough so that it doesn't feel unnatural. So if you can see, a lot of my cuts are actually touching transitional area. They're, it's touching the metal areas. It's not just kind of in the center. It helps, you know, if it touches something else, it helps blend it in. It makes it feel like the crack is occurring in the in those contact areas. So it's happening where it's touching the pieces of metal. It's happening on the top where it tore off. Uh, you, you you don't want to just randomize the locations all the time, especially on the big cuts. I'm starting to focus on the peaks now. We did the valleys and now we need to focus on higher elevations. I'm using the clay buildup brush. Uh, that's BCB if you want to do the shortcut. And I'm just pushing out shapes right now. Go between all the cuts you did and just bump it up, changing the brush size as you go. Not all, uh, not all the peaks are the same size. Uh, your brush size will probably also be decided upon the separations of uh, your valleys. I'm getting a lot of striations also in uh, my with my clay buildup. I'm taking a trim dynamic and I'm flattening it down a bit so to get rid of that. You can try and smooth it also. You, you just got to be worried about smoothing the edges uh, of the valleys and bringing down the peaks too much. You can lose a little too much detail sometimes when you smooth uh, in some areas. Try and be careful with that. I like Trim Dynamic. It makes it, uh, uh, it, makes it feel better for me. Also gives it that sharper feeling. I increase the speed again uh, by four times since uh, it's going to be a lot of the same thing, just me experimenting. I'm doing damn standard to the edges of the metal to make it feel like uh, it's being pushed in and like the metal of the axe is actually digging inside through the wood. Damn standard for that. Go back 
the other side, do the same thing. I'm using a transparency and a ghost to uh, see through the axe and be able to sculpt without uh, interfering. Going back through the damn standard, you know, making smaller cuts. Do the clay build up to push out some shapes inside the wood. So clay build up, trim dynamic, push it back down like usual. Don't be scared in uh, changing uh, shapes and uh, if you feel like you don't like something, uh, it's okay to, to redo it or try something else. You, you shouldn't be committed to what you have. I'll probably be changing the top pretty soon on it. I'm just cleaning it up with Trim Dynamic. That area is too deep. I'm going to fill that area up. I use a pinch tool to tighten that valley down. I decided to change the top again. I wasn't really too happy with how it ended up. Trying to see if a little more spiky is going to work. Maybe it just has to be a little higher. It's basically just experimenting with shapes. If you're having a hard time uh, moving some of those edges, uh, make sure to mask some of those areas out. You can always use a move topology tool, which is BMT, but uh, I like using the snake hook if uh, possible. It's just a preference though, uh, there is not one right one or a wrong one. So I'm pulling out some of the shapes, reflattening them. All right. Now we're going to go back and do the cuts since since we redid the top and all the details we did previously were gone. You've probably noticed that I don't really stick just to one area. I move around. I like to zoom out and look at the entire thing from a distance and come back in. I don't just do this on, on, on my monitor. I also sometimes get up from my desk and I stand from a far distance just to see how the axe looks. Because there's a lot of things that you won't notice if you just stay in the same distance. I'm constantly zooming in and out of my model, taking a step away from your screen to look at it. A lot of the times when you do those things, you'll see that a shape is not working the way you expected. Because a lot of the times when you zoomed in, you're thinking too small in details, and you're not thinking about the big picture, the big silhouette. And the silhouette can really change a lot on how the weapon feels. I'm digging in on the edges of the metals, making it feel like 
it's actually either you know going through the metal and being pressed by the metal It's always good to work on those transitional areas to make it feel like they're put together instead of just being floating against each other. So the inside I don't think is thick enough. So I inflated them again. I'm trim dynamicing, inflating. Just trying to make it feel thicker. Give it some weight. You want to make it feel like you can take the end of this uh, axe and just stab someone with it. Alright, it's just getting way closer to what I want. We're coming to the end of part 5. It's pretty simple to sculpt wood. A lot of trim dynamic, a lot of snake hook, and a lot of damp standard with some inflating here and there. Make sure to check out part 6 of my tutorial when it comes out. Hope you enjoyed it. If you liked my video, then don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, don't hesitate to leave a comment. Have a nice day.